As we reach the end of 2019 and enter the third decade of the 21st century, we can look back on it as an era rife with discovery. Possibly one of the most groundbreaking has to be the detection of gravitational waves. Nearly a century after Albert Einstein's quite literal universe-changing prediction of the general theory of relativity, gravitational waves were detected by the LIGO project based in the United States. This four kilometer long observatory had the sole aim of detecting these notoriously small disturbances in the curvature of space-time. On the 14th of September 2015, the first direct observation of gravitational waves was fed back to scientists. A couple of months later, after rigorous data checking, LIGO and Virgo Scientific Collaboration officially announced the existence of these elusive waves. The first set of gravitational data collected could be pinned down to two gargantuan black holes merging, sending shockwaves through the fabric of space and time like ripples in a pond. Up until this point, these elusive waves have remained undetectable due to their notoriously small amplitude, meaning that an extremely sensitive detector is needed and that other sources of noise can overwhelm the signal. Since the initial detection, these tremors have been detected a handful more times aligning with other large astronomical events across our universe. In August 2017, we observed our fourth gravitational wave from another pair of black holes merging, and then a fifth gravitational disturbance from a binary neutron star merging. This first detection of gravitational waves has truly been revolutionary for science and physics. Up until this point, just about everything we know about the universe came from studying the electromagnetic radiation in the form of light, X-rays, and infrared. Now, we have a completely novel way to learn about the universe, opening up new doors that we just didn't have access to before. The search for water on Mars has been a long and often frustrating and confusing journey. These days, it's widely accepted that for a while, very early in its history, there was abundant water on Mars' surface. The evidence for this can be found across the red planet in the form of a range of geomorphic evidence, such as in the form of winding valleys, desiccated lakes, and flowing deltas. The debate heated up in 2006, when photographs beamed back from NASA's Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter seemed to show freshly cut gullies carved into the Martian terrain that simply weren't there 10 years prior. Some think that it may be liquid brine etching away at the soil. However, critics firmly point out that the unfavorable conditions within these locations would make liquid water formation extremely unlikely. Our understanding of Mars's surface has changed drastically within the last 10 years. 2012 saw NASA's rover Curiosity discover the first solid evidence of an ancient stream bed that used to flow across Mars's surface. The rover collected a sample of small rocks made up of sand and gravel, known as conglomerates. These were imaged and sent back to Earth for analysis. Scientists were able to conclude that both the shape and size of these conglomerates signified that they had been eroded by water. This was the first bit of substantial physical evidence backing up the claims of ancient flowing water that the satellite imagery suggested years ago. Just a couple of years later, in 2016, NASA reported finding large ice deposits under the cracked and pitted plains using ground-penetrating radar. Some estimates gauge the volume of water detected would be able to fill Lake Superior. This was later expanded on by various teams of scientists who discovered multiple more subglacial lakes below the southern polar ice caps, as well as an impact crater known as the Korolev Crater which contains about 2,200 cubic kilometers of ice all year round. As we can see from its track record, Curiosity is the largest and most capable rover ever sent to Mars, and has been an overwhelming success, being a critical factor in a multitude of groundbreaking discoveries on our rocky red neighbor. Through the last decade, we've been discovering new exoplanets at a blistering pace, with over 4,000 confirmed since 2009. This can primarily be pinned as a result of the combined efforts of NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, which alone found close to 2,700 of them, and the massive push towards citizen science exoplanet identification. From Kepler's launch in 2009 to its retirement in 2018, this nine-year mission has revolutionized how we perceive ourselves within the cosmos around us. Kepler's sole instrument is a photometer that continually monitored the brightness of approximately 150,000 stars across our galaxy. 
This data is then transmitted to Earth and analyzed to detect a periodic characteristic dip in a star's brightness when an exoplanet crosses in front of the host star. With the help of a massive open science project where anyone could volunteer to help look for these transit events, Kepler was able to observe 530,506 stars and successfully detected 2,662 planets by the end of its service. Within this list, some of the gems were TRAPPIST-1, a star system just 39 light years away that hosts a whopping seven Earth-sized planets, and TRES-2b, the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any light that hits it. To understand the universe, we must be able to observe it accurately. As a result of multiple major space telescopes launched this decade, we have seen our understanding of our universe develop at a staggering pace. The European Space Agency's Gaia telescope has investigated star velocity and projection data. The Planck satellite has been monitoring the bubble of radiation that surrounds our universe. And the Event Horizon telescope was able to capture our first image of a black hole silhouette. Since the launch of the European Agency's Gaia Telescope, we've been able to develop the most in-depth catalogue of stars, with over one billion astronomical objects detected, analysed and tracked. Over five years, Gaia monitors each of its target stars about 70 times, precisely recording position, distance, movement and changes in brightness. Gaia's contribution to the precise measurement of a celestial object's position has allowed us to both map the predicted path of these stars, as well as reverse these projections and trace the movements back through the history of the Milky Way. One of the most famous images to come out of a telescope operating within this decade is the Planck satellite's measurements of the early universe's faint afterglow. Through the mapping of cosmic background radiation, we've been able to answer many of the fundamental questions of the universe. We are now pretty confident that the universe is inflating. We can't see gravitational waves. The standard model fits what we have observed. There is more dark matter than normal matter. And we can now dispel the idea of a big crunch or big rip to hypothetical cosmological models concerning the ultimate fate of the universe. On August 25th, 2012, Voyager 1 became the first spacecraft to puncture the boundary between the Sun and interstellar space, known as the heliopause. Six years later, Voyager was joined by its sister probe, Voyager 2. Launched in the summer of 1977, the unmanned space probes have been travelling for 42 years and have carried out an extensive survey of the planets and moons of the outer solar system. The twin spacecraft have returned thousands of photographs and reams of scientific data that have changed our fundamental understanding of the entire solar system. The New Horizon probe has been a major success story for NASA since its launch in 2006. Nearly 10 years later, New Horizon has provided some of the clearest and closest images of Pluto as it whizzed past in 2015. The first pictures were beamed back to Earth at the end of April and with each passing week they became sharper and clearer, showing distinct features on the not-so-barren surface. Sending all this data back to Earth has been a rather complicated and arduous task, as a result of the large 6.25 gigabyte file size, its 4.5 light-hour distance from Earth, and its painfully slow 1 to 2 kilobit per second download speed. In total, the transfer time was about 15 months. But luckily, these images have been worth the wait, as they completely surprised scientists with just how complex the surface was. This information has played a fundamental role in our understanding of Pluto's surface. On the 12th of November 2014, the European Space Agency announced that the Rosetta spacecraft had sort of successfully landed on the 67P churyumov gerasimenko comet after a nail-biting two-hour landing. As a result of the comet's low mass and gravity, Rosetta had been designed with multiple tools to aid with its landing process. Unfortunately, during the final stages of the landing, the thruster and harpoons failed to operate whilst the ice screws weren't able to get a sufficient grip. The cascade of failures resulted in the spacecraft bouncing twice, and only eventually came to a rest after making contact with the surface for a third time. 
In the last 10 years, the study of carbon-based organic molecules has been a significant focus within many of our space missions. These fundamental building blocks are a necessary ingredient for life and are relatively easy to detect once we get within sampling distance. Other than the genuinely mesmerizing images and time lapses that Rosetta also captured, the chemical data revealed that the comet was home to a range of carbon-based organic molecules. Yet another location within our solar system that these essential large organic molecules are present. Across the decade, scientists around the world working for different companies have pulled off some impressive feats when it comes down to spaceflight. As a general trend, spaceflight is becoming more globally focused with new countries entering into the space race, such as North and South Korea. For the first time since our initial ventures off planet Earth, the private space flight industry is on the cusp of seeing insane breakthroughs from a number of different companies. SpaceX has completed the first private resupply of the International Space Station. Virgin Galactic is the leader of suborbital spaceflight, and Israeli company Spacehill has sent the world's first privately funded mission to the moon. If you've enjoyed today's video, please hit the like button. And if you've got any ideas for things you'd like us to cover, please leave a comment below. If you'd like to see more of our content, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to be told whenever our new videos go live.